Hey everyone, it's Rika from Silver Logic. I'm going to show you how to create a tracking label or shipping label um, in Pirate Ship from your Go Imagine order. So in a previous walkthrough, I showed you how to process an order and kind of about halfway through that, um, I talked about you would need to generate a tracking number and everything. This is kind of uh, the video of how you would do that within Pirate Ship. There are lots of other uh, shipping label uh, websites out there that you can go through. This is just for Pirate Ship today because this is the most popular one so far, um, but I plan on going through and doing other ones as well. So the first thing we're going to do is log in to go imagine into our vendor account. I am logged into the test account. So we're going to go to view orders and we're going to work with this order, which is the same order I was working with in how to uh, process and fulfill orders. We'll go ahead and click on it. Uh, my browser window is a little bit small right now, and I purposely did this so that uh, you can see what how things look on different browsers. So normally when you log in, you are going to see, and I just made my browser a little bit bigger so you can see everything's over here on the left. But if you're on mobile or you just have a smaller screen, maybe like an iPad or something, once you get to a certain uh width of your screen here, you're going to see the information over here on the left is gone and you're going to see this little guy right here and this little tab and when you click him, it's going to pop open your information here. So we're going to need this information in just a moment, but what we're going to do now is go back over to Pirate Ship and you need to log in if you already have an account or if you don't have an account, create one. It's free to create an account. Pirate Ship doesn't charge a monthly fee as of right now. Um, and you just pay uh, per label. So there are two ways you can create a label. You can either create a single label or you can upload a spreadsheet to do things in bulk. I did look into this for using it with Go Imagine and you can do it. I, it's, I don't know if it's really too helpful. It's, it, it would be very helpful if all of your packages are the same size, the same shipping method, um, then that would work. I'll go ahead and put a link um, to this video here on Pirate Ship's Support Center. And this is how you would um, go about uploading a spreadsheet that you would export from Go Imagine. And if people really need that information, I'm more than happy to create a video for that in the future. But for today, we're just going to do a single label. So you just need to cl uh, click Create a Single Label. And right here, it's pretty simple. You just paste in the required fields of name, address, city, state, zip, country. And if there is uh, some of this optional stuff, which is an email address, a phone number, a company name, and an apartment, a uh, unit, whatever, you know, an address, two line, that's where all this information goes. One really cool thing about Pirate Ship is in this, right next to the ship to, uh, field up here, it says paste address. And if you click that, it opens up this box and you can actually paste in the address and the name and it will automatically fill in that information. So you don't have to do it manually uh, every time. So if we go back to our order here, you're always going to want to ship it to the shipping address. Uh, right now there is a little bug in, in uh, Go Imagine that uh, the the ship to name for whatever reason isn't being shown right here like it is on the billing address. They are working on that. It will get fixed eventually, but that is the one thing you will have to manually move over if, uh, if it's, if you're, if it's not there. Um, and if the shipping address is the same as the billing address, you can just copy the billing address instead of, um, the shipping address. But if the shipping address is differently, you would want to copy this. Uh, you'd want to copy this part and paste it in, and then you'd want to copy the name separately and paste that in. But since this is this going to be the same address, I'm just going to copy everything, uh, highlight it, and then I'm going to either uh, press Command-C on a Mac or Control-C on a PC, and that will copy it. You can also right-click on it and press Copy, and that will copy it into your clipboard. And if we go back over to Pirate Ship, we can do Command-V, or control V, or you can even right click and press paste. And it will paste that information in here and it automatically detects the name, the address, city, state, zip. 
Uh, it does not automatically, I don't think it does any of these optional ones. Uh, it may. If you, if you do put in the email address, you can have Pirate Ship send the customer an email from Pirate Ship with the information. You're going to want to go into settings and set all that up beforehand because there's an email template. Um, but you can have them do that. You'll, uh, the, uh, but Go Imagine will also send an email. The biggest problem with that is sometimes those emails get filtered into junk or spam. So it, you could do both. It wouldn't hurt. Um, and, you know, phone number, enter all that stuff um, if you want it. Then the next part is they have this rubber stamp, which is where it just adds a little, a little field at the bottom of the shipping label. If you want to put like their order number or if you need to put some other kind of reference, it's the reference field essentially that sometimes you'll see on shipping labels. You can put stuff in there or not. It's up to you. Uh, I'm not going to put anything in there. Well, actually, you know, for this purpose, I will just so we can see it. I'm going to put the order number. Uh, just so you'll we'll be able to see what that looks like on the package. Uh, my ship from is already filled out from when I set everything up. If you want to create a different ship from address, you can uh, click the little arrow and don't use, you can, don't use and you can type in what you want. But I am going to use my default. And if you already have a package uh, created, you can click it or uh, you can manually put in everything. So I'm going to manually put everything in for this particular walkthrough. So the first thing you have to pick is the type of packaging. And you've got lots of options here. You've got the, a box or a rigid, rigid package, an envelope, a bag, you know, something soft that's um, not too thick and or rigid. Uh, you can also pick from flat rate boxes or other uh, priority mail envelopes. And then there's also express. So you've got lots of options here. Just know that if you pick this, if you pick the box and then you decide, oh, I actually want to do a priority mail, you're going to have to come back here and switch it to a priority mail box. Uh, in this particular scenario, I'm going to go ahead and pick envelope. And I'm going to put in the length. Oops. Let's see if I can type. And the width. And the weight of the package. If you don't have a scale, for weighing your packages. You can get one um, on Amazon. The post office actually sells one a lot of different places. We'll give them to you for free sometimes, um, but you can get an inexpensive one depending on if you, uh, I like I got a scale years ago that goes up to 88 pounds, I think, and I think I paid about $30, $40 for it. If you only need to go up to a certain amount of ounces, you can get uh, cheaper ones. I'll go ahead and put some links to some scales uh, for you guys in the description box of the video if you need one. Uh, the one that I have they no longer make, but I believe there's a newer version, so I will try and put a link to that one as well. Uh, under extra services, you can, you know, turn on if you want signature confirmation, insurance, all that jazz. And then also underneath that, they need if, you, if you're sending hazardous materials, which they give you some nice examples, um, you would check mark that. If you need to do customs forms, you would check mark that. If you want to save your package, like if this is something you use a lot, you can save uh, the package and give it a name. And that's actually what shows up uh, right here under this say, you know, package details. And so you can see I saved one before called default envelope. And that would do the same information there. Then you click get rates. I need to uncheck that, get rates, and it's going to show you who you're shipping to, your shipment from, more information. Uh, it's going to show you the cheapest service first. If you don't want to ship that, you've got a couple other options here that they'll give you and you can pick whatever you want. It says one label. You can pick your ship date, so if you're not going to sh actually ship that day lets you go, let's see, it's like it lets you go about a week in advance. It also tells you your total cost. I'm going to go ahead and buy this even though it's a fake label and I'm also going to get a refund on it. 
I'll put a little note in the description if the refund process is difficult, but just note that most places they take a couple weeks to almost a month sometimes to do the refund, and that's usually because they want to make sure you don't use the postage. But there is always the option to refund. If for some reason you want to cancel out at this point, you can click cancel and delete label. I'm going to click buy label. And now you can see that I have uh, bought my label. You can see the tracking number right here. You can copy it, which is what we'd want to do when we go to put it back in Go Imagine. So we'd go back over to Go Imagine, close out this panel if it's open. And if you haven't uh, already put in your tracking information uh, from watching my video previously, I've removed the, the test tracking information. I'm going to click on Create Detailed Shipment. And all this is explained as to what does what in that video, and I'll put a link to it. But I'm going to go ahead and fill out the shipping method, the tracking number, the carrier. If I have any comments, like, thanks for your order. Um, I'm going to put those there because those comments will be passed on in the email to your customer. We're going to change the order status to fulfilled and complete. That way it will change it saying it's done. And we can also have it send the shipment notification to customer. So that means that once we press this create button, it's going to send out an email to your customer saying, hey, your order has been shipped. Here is your tracking information. You're, you're done. You know, essentially you're good to go. That doesn't have to wait. So I'm going to press create. Just going to take a second for it to upload everything. And now the shipment has been created. Our order status is now fulfilled and complete. And there's the tracking information. We go back over to Pirate Ship. It says ready to print. I uh, have a label printer, a 4x6 label printer. So if I click, let's see, there should be, here we go, print label. I'm going to change it to the 4x6 label. So now it's showing me a PDF of my label here. And this is where the rubber stamp information shows up. And I would just go ahead and print this to my label printer. I'll also put a, a link to some label printers that I have used and some that I haven't that a lot of people that are cheaper that a lot of people use. I currently use a brother QL-1110NWB label printer. And what I really like about that label printer is it has wireless uh, printing functionality into it and network uh, networking. So I can actually leave it plugged into my network over off to the side. I don't have to plug it into my computer. When I process an order and print a shipping label, I can just have it wirelessly sent over there. I love it. I just got this one. I've tried. I've also had a Dymo, which was fine. And I had a, a Zebra printer, which was great, except that there's no Mac support. I'll do a whole other video on printers, but um, that's the one I'm currently using. They also make one that's about $100 less. I think the retail price of the wireless, like the one with networking, is about $280, depending on where you get it from. That's the retail price, $279.99. They have the one that doesn't have networking, so if you just want to plug it in and you want a nice, high-quality label printer, uh, it's about $100 less. I think it's about $180. Uh, so you might want to look into that. Anyway, I would just print that. And the other thing that's cool about... Um, pirate ship is they have an option to click uh, to create a two by seven shipping label so if you don't have a four by six label printer because those are typically more expensive you can get one of the smaller a dymo 450 um, or brother makes a smaller one there's lots of smaller ones that only do like a width of like two to three inches i believe and they also give you an option um and when i click that they're telling me i've got to change it um to use those labels instead, which is great, because uh, that's a cheaper option for people, especially if you don't ship a lot or you don't want to use 4x6. So now we've printed my label. It's ready to ship. It tells you to either drop it off at your post office or schedule a pickup, and you're all done. Um, to refund your label, you click that. I'm going to do that in a minute, but 
Otherwise, you're good to go. Let me know if you have any other questions or if there's anything else I can help you with. Pirate Ship does have a really great support center. It's at support.pirateship.com. If you have any questions about how to actually use Pirate Ship, I would suggest searching in there. They also have a pretty uh, responsive support team. I've had to email them to ask some questions about certain things they do, and they usually get back to me pretty quickly. Uh, so Pirate Ship's a great one to use, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.